Amen. 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 From God. Amen. Proverbs, the 30th chapter in the 25th verse reads, the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Thus ends the reading of God's most precious and holy word. You may take your seat in the house of the Lord at this time. Amen. I want to talk to um, you today from the thought, prepare yourself. <laughs> We're going to talk about preparation on today. Yeah. Prepare yourself. Everybody ready to die and go to heaven. But not enough of us are prepared to live here on earth. Yeah. Prepare yourself. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. Y'all trying to go somewhere. Hey, you're in the wrong place. Let's preach you out of here. Hey, man, we about to advance and grow the kingdom. <laughs> we about to advance. There's still some things you need to see. Uh -huh. there's still some places you need to go there's still some good success and experiences you need to have amen prepare yourself prepare yourself our walk with Christ requires more than knowing God's word God's word is a language and when we are in Christ and become a new creature his word becomes our language Therefore, we must reverence, watch this, and respect the word of God. The problem many people are having today is that they know God's word, but they don't know God's voice. God, I got to say that one more time. I got to say that one more time because that penetrated my heart. The problem many people are having today is that they know God's word, but they don't know his voice. People have a knowledge of God's word, but not the wisdom to apply it. Knowledge is the tool. But wisdom teaches you how to use it. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is the tool, but wisdom teaches you how to use it. Knowledge is the word, but wisdom comes through the voice behind the word. You can have a knowledge of God's word. But if you don't have the wisdom to apply it, you will not only mess yourself up, but other folk as well. Knowledge will get you in the door. But wisdom is what keeps you there. Knowledge will get you in the door, but wisdom is what keeps you there. Knowledge, this is powerful here, introduces you to fear. Knowledge introduces you to fear. But wisdom teaches you to never trust your fears. Mm -hmm. Wisdom teaches you to never trust your fears. Pastor, what do you mean? Wisdom teaches me to never trust my fears because your fears don't know your strength. Mm -hmm. You should never trust your fears because your fears don't know your strength. Wisdom teaches you that you can't be dating a married man. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You can't be dating a married woman. Y'all say this ain't for none of y'all in here. So this for the folk. Uh huh. This for the folk who watch it on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. They say it's about y'all. They say they say it's about y'all. It's not about them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Wisdom teaches you that you can't be dating a married man or woman. Watch this and praying for a faithful spouse. <laughs> Oh, we got to get some knowledge in here. We got to get some, we got to get some wisdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wisdom teaches you, watch this, privacy is powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, wisdom teaches you privacy is powerful. Watch this. Nobody can wreck a home they know nothing about. Ooh. So in other words, wisdom says, stop telling folk all your business. Ooh, huh? Wisdom may seem like a small thing in the grand scheme of things, but it is the most important. Proverbs 4 and 7 states, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, watch this, 
get understanding. Mm -hmm. And all you in all you're getting, make sure you get understanding. Huh? You can know God's word, but that doesn't mean you know God's voice. What happens when you can't think of a scripture? Mm -hmm. What happens when you don't know a scripture? What happens when you can't read a scripture? And you're going through a test or trial. Your very survival at that point is dependent upon not a scripture, watch this, but his voice. Uh, it's dependent upon his voice. Mm -hmm. I know you know the word, but do you know the voice behind the word? Can you hear God in your children? Mm -hmm. I know they might not be living the way that you want them to live and doing everything that you want them to do. But every now and then, God will use what you consider to be that knucklehead, that bad seed, that off the chain child. God will use them to speak a word into your life. Can you hear the voice in your children? Can you hear God's voice in your spouse? You want them to be a man of God. You want them to be a woman of God. But can you hear? God's voice. Sometimes God will speak to you in the least likely uh, most and or most unlikely ways. If he can use somebody or call somebody that can't stand you to bless you, he can use somebody you can't stand to speak to you about you. Pray for me. Okay. Uh, God's voice can be heard in unsuspecting ways. It can be heard in unsuspecting um, ways. If he can cause somebody, God help me, he, 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 in unsuspecting um, ways. Let me get there. Uh huh. He'll speak to you through a road sign. Oh, I'm not, okay. I'm not the only one. Okay. Don't make me think I'm crazy. Uh huh. Uh -huh. He, he'll speak to you doing a commercial. Okay, I'm not okay. Uh huh. He'll speak to you while watching a movie. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. He'll speak to you through that in law that you consider to be an outlaw. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, uh huh. Uh -huh. It's not enough to know God's word, but you need to know God's voice. God, I'm trying. You need to know God's voice. His, his voice will keep you from making the wrong decision. His, his voice will keep you from making that mistake again. His, his voice will keep you from doing that wrong thing. His voice will keep you from entertaining the wrong thoughts. His, his voice will teach you when to open your mouth. And his voice will also tell you when to keep your mouth closed. Uh, his voice will tell you when to pray his voice will tell you when you are wrong his voice will tell you when you are right his voice will tell you when to apologize in other words it's not enough to know God's word but you need to know the voice behind the word you need to know the voice you need to know the voice huh? go ahead and tap yourself and say I need to know the voice huh? I need to know the voice I need to know the voice when you know God's voice and not just his word you won't be easily distracted you you won't be easily disappointed or discouraged huh? when I was a kid sometimes my siblings would say mama said clean up so some of y'all can relate to that mm -hmm. they would say mama said clean up mm -hmm. uh, I would take my time watch this the reason I would take my time is because mama wasn't there say clean up mama ain't here oh, I clean up when I get ready y'all come on now we get okay. What you mumbling about? It you was the main mumbler in your family growing up, and you want to question your kids about what they mumbling about, it, huh? They get it from you, God. <laughs> hey man, you you were the main mumbler. My my mom ain't here. I do it when I get ready. Mm -hmm. I'm the man, you know. Uh -huh. Watch this. Uh huh. Uh -huh. The reason I would move is because I was getting her word from somebody else. I was getting her word from somebody else, so it didn't move me. I knew it was her words, but I still chose not to listen or obey like I should. Huh? But then there was a time when mama said that room better be clean before I get back. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It was. Why? Why? Why was that room cleaned up before she got back? Because I heard her voice. 
God, I'm trying to make it plain for us. I heard her voice. Hearing her voice move me into action. Hearing her voice move me into action. And there are many people who know the word but won't be moved into action until they hear the voice of the word. And when you read God's word, watch this, you should hear his voice. Mm. When you read God's word, you should hear his voice. Uh huh. Praise and worship should not be to entertain you. Praise and worship is so you can hear God's voice. I'm trying to talk to somebody in here. Uh huh. Prayer and fasting is not designed so people can see how saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled you are, so people can see what you're willing to do in order to deny yourself. Fasting and praying is designed so you can hear God's voice. That's the purpose behind it. That's the that's the purpose behind it. Hearing his voice. Let me let me move. Many people take hearing God's voice as a small thing. But it's the small things that often have the greatest impact. Do you hear me? It's the small thing that often have the greatest impact. Mm -hmm. Wisdom may seem like a small thing, but it's the most principal or most important thing. Mm -hmm. The small thing I want to show you wisdom through um, today is found in Proverbs 30 and 25, which states, watch this, that ants are a people not strong. Mm -hmm. Yet they provide their food in the summer. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of the ant is found in its preparation during the summer because it knows winter is coming. Huh? And someone listening today needs to know the weight had nothing to do with punishment. God help me in here. The weight had nothing to do it with punishment. It was all about preparation. Mm -hmm. The weight had nothing to do with punishment. It was all about preparation. However, the problem many people have is they think preparation is just for Sunday. They think preparation is just for Sunday. Watch this. That's one day a week. Mm -hmm. And some people still aren't prepared. Ooh, God, he, he gave it to me. I wrote it down. He gave it to me. I'm just saying what he say. I'm just saying what he say. Uh huh. You prepare or prepare for work. You you prepare or are prepared or prepare for work more than that. Mm? Uh huh. Are you prepared for Monday through Saturday? Or in other words, are you prepared for life? Are you prepared for life? I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Well, Pastor, I got dreams. I, uh, Pastor, man, I got goals. I got ambitions. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you got dreams, but a dream without preparation is nothing more than a wish. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I wish you would have more than just a dream. I wish you would prepare. God, oh Lord, help me. Uh -huh. Don't confuse getting by with being prepared. I got to let that sink down. Uh -huh. Don't confuse getting by with being prepared. Because soon getting by won't be enough. Uh -huh. Which I'm just getting by. Mm -mm. You better prepare. Getting by is a sign you need to prepare. Mm -hmm. People don't like preparation though. Because pre preparation requires you to deny yourself. Mm -hmm. Hey, I like that. Preparation requires you to sacrifice. Uh -huh. I, I want you to sacrifice, but I, you know, as many people, I want you to sacrifice, but I don't want to sacrifice. I want you to go on a, 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 a overnight shut in for me. Pray for me, preacher, and see what God tells you concerning me. <laughs> what, what, what are you going to do? Uh, uh, you want me to do all this preparation requires sacrifice. We all have a responsibility to be prepared. Don't confuse getting by. With being prepared. As Christians, how should we prepare? First, you need to study. No other way to put it. We need to study. We, we need to study. Make sure you get that. The first thing you need to do in order to prepare yourself is study. Second Timothy 2 and, 2 and 15 states, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Watch this rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. A constant prayer of mine is, Lord, give me wisdom as I read your word. 
Mm -hmm. Lord, I don't want to just read your word to read your word. I don't want to just read your word because I grew up in the church and my mom and my daddy said I had to read your word. And in Sunday school, they taught me that a scripture a day keep the enemy away. Come on. I don't want to just read. I want to read your word because I want a right relationship with you so that I can have me some wisdom. Huh? Because I know what it's like to operate in my own knowledge. Uh -huh. My knowledge then got me in enough trouble. God, I need your wisdom. God, help me. Oh yeah, I need your, I need your wisdom. Studying God's word allows you watch this to spend time with Him and build a strong, enduring relationship. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself in a bit, a bit irritated or overwhelmed, it's a sign that you need to spend more time with God. Uh -huh. It's a sign you need to spend more time with God and less time with the world. Mm -hmm. It's a sign you need. Pastor, what do you mean more time with God and less time with the world? There's some stuff. Sometimes you just need to cut the TV off. <sighs> Sometimes, some, sometimes you just got to get by yourself. Uh -huh. There are times I pull up, I pull up to the house and God is talking. I won't go. I sit right there in that truck and let God finish. Uh -huh. Because I don't want any distractions. I want to hear you got to learn how to get by yourself. Uh huh. So you can, you can, so you can, oh God, I'm going into my next one. So you can meditate on what God is saying to you. You got to spend some time with him. The more time we spend with God's word, the clearer his voice gets. Y'all don't believe me? The clearer. The clearer his voice gets. Uh -huh. God's word quiets the world and echoes the kingdom. Uh -huh. when, when what you're hearing is not aligned with the kingdom, you're not hearing God's word. You're hearing thoughts, you're hearing ideas, you're hearing opinions of this world, but you're not hearing God's word. God's word echoes the kingdom. I had to learn that. Huh. It doesn't echo what I think. It echoes what his word says. Secondly, number two, number two, because you know I got to give you this because I need you to have that shortest pencil instead of that longest memory. Number two, you need to memorize God's word. It, it ain't, it's enough to read it, but you need to memorize it. Psalms 119 and 11. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. States, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, you, you, got, you got to memorize. You got to, you got to memorize. Why? God's word, see, temptations, they were, uh, not temptations, the supreme, they were on to something. When you memorize God's word, you might be about to get yourself into something, but God's word would say, stop in the name of love. God, help me, because God is love. They were on to something. You will stop in the name of love. They were on to something, right? The memorization is the process of committing something to memory. It's the process of committing something to memory. It is a mental process that allows you, watch this, to store thoughts, ideas, or words for later recall. That's memorization. When you fill your mind with God's word, you have no room for Satan's lies. God, you better ask yourself, what are you full of today? What are you full of? Huh? Are you full of his word or are you full of the enemy's lies? What are you? Were well, you full of, okay, Pastor, well, I'm full of myself. Well, you full of lies. You full of lies. You full of lies. Uh-huh. You know, mm, don't be so full of yourself. God has no room. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Move, King. Move, King. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If you remember God's word, then he will be faithful. Watch this. To not only perform his word, but also remember you. Mm -hmm. And someone listening on today is connected to someone who is always trying to feed them their opinion. Uh -huh. But you must accept God's word over their opinion every time. I better say that one more time. Uh, there's someone listening who there's all there's someone who's always trying to tell you what they think, always trying to tell you how they feel. They're always trying to give you their opinion, but you must accept God's word over their opinion every time. Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 24 and 35, heaven and earth will pass away. Yeah. It's going to pass away. Watch what he says. But my words will never pass away. Ooh, my word will be here forever. Which means even if it pass away, I got the word huh, to reestablish it. Y'all don't even understand how powerful and mighty your God is. It can pass away and I can recreate the very thing. What? what he say in the beginning let there be huh it can pass away and all i gotta god say i got another let there be in my mouth Ooh, god's word god's word uh-huh please hear me please hear me the ant knows 
how to ignore where he is and what he's going through in order to prepare for what he has to go through and where God is taking him to. Uh -huh. The ant understands this. The ant teaches us you have to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible distinctly says the ant prepares for winter while it is still summer. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Therefore, the ant refuses to focus on the past hurts and the past pains because it does, if it doesn't prepare now, it is possible it will repeat the same cycle again. So I don't have time to focus on that. Mm -hmm. I got to stay focused on where I'm going because if I focus on the past, I'll, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a possibility that I will repeat that cycle all over again. Mm -hmm. And someone listening today needs to know it's time, watch this, for you to bring closure to that situation. God help me in here. Y'all pray for me, please. It's time for you to bring closure to that situation. huh? If not, you will keep reliving the same nightmare over and over again. huh? Physically, y'all broke up, but mentally, y'all still together. God, y'all don't want to talk to me in this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Because you keep allowing the same games he or she played 10 to 15, 20 years ago to upset you. Huh? The ant teaches us, I can't focus on my last season. Huh? I can't focus on my last season because if I keep focusing on my last season, I might miss my new one. Huh? And I need you to understand something. When you focus on your last season, you miss what God is trying to do next in your life. Huh? Your last season may not have been the blessing that you were believing and praying God for, but God said, I needed you to go through that season so I could teach you a lesson. I need you to recognize the enemy. I need you to recognize what I want for you or what I need you to have as it pertains to what you want and what you want to have. God said, I need you to go through that season. Hey, God, I love you. I love you. Huh? Uh -huh. The, the time. Oh, God. The ant teaches us I can't focus on my last season because I might miss my new one. And when you focus on the past, watch this. You put your future at risk. That's powerful. When you focus on the past, you put your future at risk. Ooh, God, I need that to soak. Because we get there. We get caught. Well, we could get stuck there. Okay. I could get stuck there. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all, I'm talking to the deep church now. I'm talking to the deep folk, the deep folk who don't have, ain't never did. Your past was wonderful. You made all the right decisions, did all the right things. Well, mom and daddy said, no, you still said, yeah. Y'all see, y'all talking, I'm, I'm proud of you. Clap, clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. But every now and then, there's some stuff that I did. There's some stuff that I put myself through. There's some stuff I put my family through. I need to understand, I can't dwell on that stuff because of my I stay there, I run the risk of missing out on my future. Mm. The end also teaches us the importance of waiting. Mm. Mm. Uh, you can't reap a harvest you are not willing to wait for. Uh, Lord, send the harvest. <laughs> but you don't understand the harvest take time. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. The harvest take time. God help me in this place. I, I was talking to my talking to my cousin the other day, and he was telling me we were looking at the, um, the cotton fields, and he was telling me about how he used to, when he was younger he would go out there and pick the cotton. Say he hated picking the cotton because you had to pick so you only got paid by the pound. And he was talking about how much cotton you actually had to pick in order to get a pound. I was just like, cause you know, you Georgia they still got the cotton fields and everything. That he was saying when we were going there, they would pick he would pick he would pick the cotton and everything and. They but he said, you know what? If you wanted to get something, you had to go out and do something. Mm -hmm. He said, so since I needed me some money in my pocket as a young man, I understood I had to go out and work it. So my question is, you want to harvest, but are you willing to work the field? God help me. Are you willing to till the ground? Uh -huh. You got help me in this place because everybody want to harvest. But what are you willing to do? Uh, yeah, you you got to till, you got to work for it. You, you, you can't reap a harvest. You are not willing to work for it. Waiting is just as much a part of preparation as working is. Watch what Job say. Job said, I will wait for my change to come. Ooh. Hold on, hold on. When, when, when Job said that, he had lost his children. When, when Job said that, he had lost his 
cattle. God help me. Uh, uh, when Job said that, he had lost his servants. Uh, when, uh, when Job said that, his wife had told him to go ahead and curse God and die. God help me. But Job still said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait. God help me in this place. I'm trying to encourage somebody. I'm going to wait for my change to come. Uh, uh, the psalmist said, I will wait on the Lord and be of good courage. God help me. God help. This is what the psalmist said. I'm, I'm going to wait. And not only am I going to wait, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to fuss. I'm not going to argue. I'm going to be of good courage because uh, pa, pa, how can I be of good courage while I'm, I'm waiting? Because you made up your mind and the way I'm going to take it out my hands and I'm going to put it in God's hands uh -huh, because God knows how to handle this situation better than me. So I made up my mind. I'm going to give it over to God. Uh -huh. The psalmist said, I'm going to wait and be of good courage. Huh? Why? He said, because if I wait and be of good courage, he he will strengthen my heart. Y'all, no, y'all know what anybody know what it's like to have your heart strengthened. Hey, God, help me in this place. Huh? You should be crying. Huh? You should be snapping. You you should be off. You should be in the loony. You should be in a loony, a loony house or what a crazy house or whatever they call it. But but you said he shall strengthen. My heart, God, help me. Uh -huh. Isaiah said, watch this, Isaiah said, uh, Marie, Isaiah said, but they that wait upon the Lord. Huh? Do I got anybody here that made up their mind? I'm going to wait on the Lord. Huh? He said, the day that wait upon the Lord, he said, shall renew their strength. And I know some of you right now are weak. Huh? You're tired and you're worn. Huh? But he said, if you wait on the Lord, you shall renew your strength. Huh? Not only did he say, you're going to renew your strength. Oh, God, I love you, Lord. Huh? But he said, you're going to mount up. Up with the wings as eagles. Huh? Help me in. Do you ever seen an eagle stretch his wings huh? as he gets ready to take off? Huh? You need to get ready to take off. If you waiting on the Lord any second now, you need to tap yourself say any second now, I'm going to my next level. Any second now, I'm going high in God. Any second now, a greater anointing is coming my way. Any second now. He say you mount up with the wings. His eagles. Watch, watch what he says. He say you gonna run. And if you anything like me, you run and you get tired. And some of y'all saying, Pastor, I can walk fast, but I ain't running nowhere. Uh -huh, I can walk fast. I, I know how to get a fast walk on, but I ain't running nowhere. But he say they're going to run or walk fast huh? and not be weary. Help me in this place. Huh? Uh -huh. And they shall walk and not faint. Huh? I need you to get ready for some supernatural strength to come your way in order for God to prepare you huh? or to take you where he, what he has destined for you. Huh? I need you to get ready for a burst of energy to come, God help me in this place to come from out of nowhere Ooh. God I love you waiting is not wasting huh? waiting is preparing Ooh, I told you I'm throwing some niggas out here for us today waiting is not Wasting up, you don't understand. I've been waiting all this long, and I'm just wasting my time. You ain't wasting your time. You wasting your time because you're not using your time wisely by preparing for where God is trying to take you. You need to be thanking God that He still got you waiting because He could be protecting you from something or somebody. Ooh, we, don't, we don't think about that stuff. You know what you like. God got to save them first. <laughs> he he got to save them first. Ooh. Ooh. Now, rough. Now you got God got to save them. Help me, Lord. <laughs> I gotta save them first. Oh, Lord, I love you. I love you. Uh -huh. uh, the problem is too many people are so focused on someone else's reality, they have no time to focus on their own. Uh, excuses will always be there, but opportunity won't. Uh, uh -huh. Excuses will always be there, but opportunity won't. Also, you need to know the difference between patiently waiting and wasting your time. Uh -huh. You need to know the difference between patiently waiting and wasting your time. Uh, sometimes you must accept the truth. Mm. God, I better say that one more time sometimes you must accept the truth go ahead and finish it now and stop wasting time on the wrong people 
Ooh, uh, there was a quote that states, don't waste your time watching sunsets with somebody who won't be there for, for the sunrise. I digress. I, I digress. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be praying for me. Huh? you wasting no time. God, help me. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Watching sunsets with somebody who don't plan to be there for sunrise. Y'all will get it when y'all get home. Y'all will get it. Get it when you when you get home. I, I gotta digress. I gotta leave that alone. I, just, I gotta leave that alone. Huh? The ant prepares, watch this, by taking food from the summer and storing it for the winter. Hmm? Nothing stops this process because the ant has enough faith to believe he's preparing for a future that he will one day enjoy. Huh? Preparation isn't for the present, it's for the future. I got to drive at home. Preparation isn't for the present, it's for the future. Your future is counting on you, therefore you need to be prepared. Your future is counting on you, huh? The ant teaches us you are not to be uh, you are not to be busy worrying about other people's business, huh? but you are to be busy about your father in heaven's business. Huh? Be so busy with your father's business, huh? you can't see the enemy. Huh? The enemy don't even phase you. You can't hear the enemy. Huh? You are not distracted by the enemy. Huh? You got to get busy with what's going to bless you. Huh? Do you hear me? You got to get busy with what's going to bless you. Huh? Get busy with what's going to free you. Huh? Get busy with what's going to deliver you. Huh? Get busy being about the business huh? your father has for you. Uh -huh. Everybody wants to eat, huh? but not everybody wants to prepare. Huh? Please hear me with your good spiritual ear. Huh? If you are going to have it, the ant teaches us, huh? you have to go get it. Y'all don't want to talk to me in this place. Everybody waiting on somebody to bring them a crumb huh? when God has given you the resources and tools huh? to get the whole plate. Y'all don't want to talk to me in this place. You want a piece of slice of the pie when God has given you the tools and the resources huh? to have the whole pie. You got to go get it. You better tap yourself right now and say, go get it. Go get it. Huh? I'm waking up the anointed on the inside of me. Huh? The gift and the potential huh? on the inside of me. Huh? In the name of Jesus. I'm waking it up. Go get it. Yeah, you got to wake it up so you can go. So you can go get it. Uh -huh. Go get your anointing, God. You've got to go get it. You must prepare yourself for what God has prepared for you. Watch this. First Kings, um, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 2 and 9. Where did I get Kings from? First Corinthians 2 and 9 states, I have not seen. Y'all know I love this scripture. Uh, I say it all the time. Y'all can say, I say that scripture all the time. Yeah, because I believe it. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man that things which Christ has prepared. Y'all don't even hear that. Prepare. You got to be prepared. Prepare. Prepare yourself. Prepare for those who love him. This is why you need to stop treating yourself or, or allowing people to treat you like an option when God made you a priority. As a matter of fact, I got to give you another relationship goal here. Here's another relationship goal for you. Never settle for being someone's other when God created you to be someone's only. I don't even know why I'm all over here. I don't even know why God was giving me that but he told me never settle for being someone's other huh? when God created you to be someone's only. Huh? God stop making yourself an option when God made you a priority and if God made you a priority I need you to make me a priority watch this let me mess some folk up I don't need, don't, don't expect me to just make you a priority but you better make me a priority too you want from me and I want from you we got it hey Hey. Ooh. You got that, huh? I need to dang it. Uh -uh. I'm a priority too. Uh -huh. hey, we married. I'm first. I'm first. I'm the priority. But hey, y'all about to get okay, get mad at me. Ain't like you probably ain't never been mad at me before. Not the kids. I'm the priority. Cause them kids gonna do the same thing you did. Get grown and get gone. And then you gonna be up. They won't call me. They won't talk to me. I'm the priority. 
I'm the one you say you're going to grow old with. I'm the one you said we're going to become one and we're no longer time no one. I'm going to go ahead and uncle who? You know, them kids going to get grown and gone. My mama tell you, I told my brother, uh-uh, mama don't need to get married. I thought about that thing. Hold on. I'm in high school and I ain't, old, I ain't never home. I'm out. So if I ain't home now, who gonna be home? Who gonna be home? Mom, if you want it, that's what you do. <laughs> you gotta be happy. <laughs> Cause I recognize already as a sophomore in high school, I'm gonna be gone. <laughs> All right. I got some distractions out there. It's gonna, it's gonna cause me to be gone. Ooh, uh -oh. Ooh, priority. Ooh. God help me. The ant, the ant, the ant teaches us to prepare. The word pre means before, and the word pair means cut back. Please hear me. You must learn how to cut back before what you need is all gone. Oh, uh, you, you got to learn how to cut back before what you need is all gone. So you need to be prepared. Watch this for when there is nothing left. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, people are spending, but you're saving. Mm -hmm. God, God help me. They trying to look good, but you preparing to live good. Uh, uh, they are living check to check, but you preparing to get you preparing to get out of debt. God, y'all don't want to talk to me in this place. Uh, you have to prepare for where you ask God to take you. You got to prepare for that. Listen, listen, preparation requires a response and not a reaction. Uh-huh. Uh, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Typically, when a person reacts, they are not in control. Uh-huh. When they react, they're not in control. They say whatever or do whatever. Because uh -huh. they're not thinking. They're not in control. But when a person who is in control responds. And God doesn't react to us. He responds to us. I got to get here because I got to get y'all out of here. God is trying to teach us to be more proactive than reactive because proactive people are prepared people. Do you hear me? Proactive people are prepared people, not reactive people. Reactive people are not prepared. Proactive people are prepared. We say this quote, heaven is a prepared place. Uh-huh. Y'all know that quote for prepared people. But understand this. He also prepared earth for you as well. In this place right here, oh God, you shouldn't be just be preparing to live again, but you need to be prepared to live while you are living. Mm -hmm. When the enemy deceives Eve into the garden and she gave Adam and he did eat, God didn't react because he already had a response. Uh -huh. He was ready to respond. The Bible declares in Revelation 13 and 8 that the lamb Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Y'all, God already had an answer. If we messed up, oh God already had an answer. Okay, let me take you somewhere else because you say, y'all, I don't deal with Revelation. Revelation too deep. Revelation, Revelation that in time. Revelation. Uh -huh. The Bible also states that while we were yet sinners, Ooh, God, uh, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, he was already prepared to redeem us. Do you hear me? He was already prepared. God is so prepared that he, that he even provides a way of escape for you. Huh? You can't surprise God. Uh, you can't surprise God. You can't surprise God. You may surprise yourself, but not God. You may shock your family, but not God. You may have disappointed your friends, but not God. God already knew what you were going to do before you did it. That's why he gave you a way of escape. But it's up to you to take it. And that's why so many of us stay in trouble. We get in trouble, but that's why we stay in trouble because he gives us a way of escape and we won't walk out the door. Well, you know, maybe I just stay a little while. I go back to the, I go back to, to Brown and I like what Brown say. And I use this analogy just to give you an example. Brown say, uh, uh, don't be kissing Cora because kissing make babies. And I'm trying to tell you when God begins to give you that way of escape, you better get out because you might. I start creating some stuff that you want to create. You might start storing some stuff up that you don't need to get stirred up. 
God, y'all, y'all better help me in this place. Uh, First Corinthians 10 and 13, and it states, no temptation uh, has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Uh, and God is faithful. Do I know anybody that I got anybody here that could testify that God is faithful? Uh, God is faithful. Watch this. Uh, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Uh, but when you are tempted, uh, he will also provide a way of escape so that you can endure. Uh, do I got any Anybody uh, who know what it's like to slide out that door, that way of escape, uh, so you can endure what it is uh, that the enemy is trying to bring toward you? Please hear me. Uh, you not only serve a prepared God, uh, but a considerate one as well. Uh, do you hear me? You serve a God that's considerate. Uh, he's considerate. Watch this. Uh, God took into consideration your problems. Uh, he took into consideration your issues. Uh, he took into consideration your past, uh, your present, and your future. Uh, he took into consideration huh, all that you would do huh, and that's why we have great consideration all that he do so God saying my grace I took consideration to give you grace so you will have time to prepare to get your life straight grace ain't intended for you to keep doing what it is you're doing grace is intended for you to get your life straight watch what Jesus said watch what Jesus said whenever Jesus heals somebody whenever Jesus delivers somebody watch what he said he said go you better preach it. You better help me preach it. He said, go and sin no more. Grace is a desire for you to keep doing the same thing over and over and keep getting the same results over and over. Are you tired of being hurt? Aren't you tired of being broken? Aren't you tired of being disappointed? Prepare yourself. You know he coming. <laughs> you know he coming. You know she coming. <laughs> Prepare yourself. <Woo. laughs> Prepare yourself. Oh, God, help me in this place. I got to finish on up here. Stop focusing on where you are and start preparing for your next level. Hey, God, I need you to lift that hand and say, he talking about me. He's talking about me. What am I talking about? Stop focusing on where you are and start preparing for your next level. In John 14, not only did Jesus tell us to not let our heart be troubled, but he also said, I go to prepare a place for you. Huh? Help me in this place huh? that where I am, you may also be. Huh? So if Christ was preparing huh, for the next level, huh, you should too. Y'all don't want to talk to me in this place. Huh? If Christ was preparing for the next level, huh, you should be preparing too. Huh? I know you're comfortable where you are. Huh? Help me in this place. Huh? But God say it's time for me to stir up the nest huh? because I didn't desire for you to stay huh, where you are all your life. Huh? I'm not talking about the physical building of a house, but I'm talking about your spiritual state. I'm talking about your spiritual man. A spiritual man has to get aligned and intact with my word so you can develop the wisdom you need in order to go to the level that I have established for you. And you starting to stop at level two. You trying to stop at level three. I'm trying to take you to the penthouse. Your name is written all over the penthouse. I'm trying to take you to the top. Stop getting comfortable at the bottom. Stop getting comfortable at average. Stop Stop being comfortable and mediocre. Where I'm taking you is higher than you could have ever dreamed of. Higher than you could ever ask for. Higher than you could ever believe for. But I need you to prepare yourself. I need you to prepare. Ooh, woo. <laughs> Yes, Lord. I, I need you to prepare yourself. Huh? So watch this. Watch this. Huh? You got to hear me now. Huh? The good success God has for you is not for the weak. Woo. It's not for the weak. Woo. Oh, God. You got some folk who, 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 who you look at and you, you say, God, look at them. They made it. Uh huh. But you didn't see one tear they shed, and you better believe they shed them. Uh, all you see is the fact they made it. Uh -huh. You didn't see one pain they had, but you better believe they had it. Uh -huh. 
I remember, I remember I was, I was talking to my, my friend, Ella Moore. I was talking to my friend, Ella Moore. And, um, you know, he had just come back from, um, 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 mini camp, um, with the Minnesota Vikings here, just come back from mini camp with the Minnesota Vikings. So we're talking and everything. And I'm asking, I say, man, how do these players live? And he said, you want to know the truth, homeboy? I said, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know the truth. He said, just like me and you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know, because I had a couple of thousand, but they had a couple of million. Uh -huh. I wasn't expecting that. He said, they live just like me and you, paycheck to paycheck. He said, we just got a, he said, you know, he, you know, we just got all the salaries, but they got theirs, but they live paycheck to paycheck. See, I don't know if y'all got any sport because we, and I, and I got, I got to shut it down. We sit here and we look at people and we think, oh man, they've arrived. When I'm sitting here looking at the NFL, the NFL games, it's blowing my mind. How many of these players are walking away from the game because of mental issues? Yeah, but you want that bag. So I'm here to tell you, and God told me to put this in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Your next level, please hear me. The good success God has for you is not for the weak. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, they, they walked away from the game. They, they walked away from 20 million a year. Sign me up, coach. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm good for about five plays. <laughs> May just be one. Right? <laughs> That's a different speed. But you sit there and you see it. And they prepare their whole life for this. And they get there. And the attack is so heavy that they're willing to walk away. You're looking at your struggle. And if your struggle is, is hindering you to the level of you want to quit, give up, think about how it's going to be on the next level. The good success God has for you is not for the weak. You say, tell them that. You got to be ready to endure hardness as a good soldier. When, when God takes you to that next level of success, you got to be ready to arm yourself in the flesh uh, like Christ did. If Christ suffered, the you got to arm yourself like why? You, you got to be prepared. Let me get here. I promise you. I, 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 make, I make a couple of sentences so long. Uh, uh, the good success God has for you is not for the weak. You've been praying and asking God to take you to the next level. But you can't go to the next level if you are afraid of heights. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'm going to pause on that one because I really need that one. You can't go. See, it sounds good. But we in church. Take me higher, Lord. Higher heights and deeper depths. It sounds good. Ooh, you better tell it, mother. Help me preach it. You get out there and God starts doing, hold on, hold on, time out, Lord, time out. Hey, you're trying to throw in your challenge flag. Or throw it, hey, you're trying to wave the white flag and everything. You try, hey, I, this, no, I didn't, no, I said take me higher. I didn't say take me through. I said take me higher. Why are you taking me through this? This is a prerequisite to taking you higher. You got to go through this if you want to go higher. Ooh, you got to go through this. This is the prerequisite of going higher. You trying to do stuff and stuff falling apart and coming on time. Seem like it ain't working the way it should be working. People canceling all type of stuff happening. You trying to figure out. Oh, no, I didn't ask you for this. I said, take me higher. Hmm. Yeah, now, how, 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 how you going to handle your next level, uh, if you can't handle this level's devil. If you can't handle this level's devil, you ain't going to be able to handle your next level. You want to fight. You want to take your earrings out, take off your lashes. (laughs) 
That ain't all here. That just came to my mind. <laughs> you went and be ready to fight when somebody lied to you in your face. When he told you to pray for him. Woo. Are you ready? <laughs> you ready for that next level? Are you God help me? You can't be afraid of heights. Because sometimes you feel you're gonna feel like you're gonna fall over the edge. They're gonna be pushing you. Are you saying don't push me because I'm close to the okay? Y'all ain't saved, boy. Y'all ain't saved. <laughs> look at him, look at him, look at him. Whatever. Oh Lord, pray for the power, bit. Pray. Woo, Lord. So y'all know what it's like. Y'all already know what it's like, boy. It's like, man, you do, you can't, you can't. Then, then, then there are some of you who must understand to get where you're going, you need to drop some people off first. Yeah. And that's a tough one. That's a tough one for some people. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> they look like you. Huh? Got the same blood DNA you got. And you know. Well, I'm getting ready to go. You I can't I can't. I try because you know why? You know why you gotta drop them off? And it may sound harsh. You're saying, Pastor, why do I gotta drop them off? Because that's been the hold up. For some of you guys says that's been the hold up. You've been trying to take people with you where they were not destined to go. Mm -mm. And you've given in God and God and God, he's been allowing you to operate in that permissive, uh, um, that permissive will. And he said, guess what? I need you to step into my perfect will in order to go where I'm trying to tell you. You got to drop some folk off. If you don't want to go, that's your business. Uh huh. You you don't want to go. That's your bit. But I I I, I gotta watch this. I gotta go where Jesus is. Uh huh. So wherever He's leading me, guess what I said I was gonna do. I was gonna follow. That's what I said. So I gotta go where Jesus is. So you gotta be prepared to drop some folk off. You might have a third row. That don't mean they need to get in. Yeah, y'all get that. Yeah. That don't mean they need to get in. Uh huh. That don't mean they need to write. Uh, you can't take everybody with. And that's the thing with us. That's the thing with us. We want to take everybody with us. But they don't want to go. They don't want to go. And they'll do anything in their power to stop you from getting them. They don't want to go. So it's like you got to drop some people off first. Prepare yourself now for what's about to happen next. Hey, whoo. you got to prepare yourself now. Huh? Huh? You got to prepare yourself now. You got to prepare yourself now for where you're going next. You know where you're going. You say, pal, I don't know. What, no, you know where you're going because you know what you prayed for. Now, what is it going to take for you to get there? Now, prepare yourself. You know what it's going to take for you to get there. Now, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to put in the time. Prepare yourself to put in the work. Prepare yourself. Uh -huh. prepare yourself I had this I remember I, and, and I say this and it's a story behind it but I'd rather cry now than cry for the rest of my life so you need to go ahead and prepare yourself struggle now so you don't have to struggle for the rest of your life cry now so you don't have to cry for the rest of your life go ahead and be frustrated now so you don't have to be frustrated for the rest of your life prepare yourself for where it is that God is taking you. Prepare yourself for your next level of glory. Do you hear me? Uh, prepare yourself for your next level of glory. Prepare yourself for your next level of anointing. Do you hear me? Prepare yourself for your next level of worship. Prepare yourself for your next level of praise. Prepare yourself, watch this, for those higher heights and those deeper depths. God is taking you somewhere, but you gotta prepare yourself. Gotta prepare yourself. 